All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. I promise you I will read your feedback. Mark doesn't want me to promise, he just wants me to do it. And as the leaders, but I'll read your feedback right after this. But we did speak to the people of Kibra and Waigamoro was there earlier on through the Newsnight Voices. This is what they had to say concerning their issues and what they want the focus to be on. Listen. The problem is not about education. Ken Court has already did, uh, did his part for education. Sasa tunataka ah, watu wanyamisha soma. Can you give them link? Can you give them empowerment? We want the youth empowerment, the women empowerment to change their life. The stakes are high in the upcoming by-election, with many predicting that the final result will have not just local, but also national implications. But for the voters of Kibra here, all they want is a better standard of living, and they have specific concerns about what they'd like their next member of parliament to address. Honestly speaking, unasikia huyu anasema wao pigia mtu wako, huyu ndo wa nyumbani, huyu ndo wa nyumbani and you're like, ha, watu angalii manifesto ni all about ukabila mtu wa nyumbani. Wote ambao wanakuja wanakuja wakidhania ubabe wa chama utawasaidia. Na wengi wanazungumza kuhusu kazi aliyofanya Ken Okot ambaye ni mbunge ambaye aliondoka. Unajua Tunashukuru alifanya kazi nzuri lakini usije ukadandia kwa ile kazi yake kusema utaendeleza Kibra residents are keen to see how their new representative will tackle the challenges they face daily including the growing number of unemployed youth security challenges poor sanitation and healthcare Mimi ni mama ya watoto tisa na hawa watoto wanapaa wasome wakule na wabaye na kile kitu bila unaelewa So sometimes it's so challenging nafanya kazi ujikuja kwa nyumba huna chakula hata kwa nyumba ile unaweza kuwapatia kila mtu akona na ile interest ya kutaka achukue hiyo kiti lakini kutujali upande wetu sijaona kwa hiyo manifesto The Kibra by election has divided those who live and work in the community as chaos has been witnessed during this campaign season for those who have lived here for several decades these simmering divisions cannot be taken lightly Umoja wetu ni nguzo kuu sana kwa sababu nguzo ya maendeleo ni umoja wetu. Na hii inafaa kuwa kielelezo kwanza kipaumbele kwa kila mwanyaji kiti hiki. Kwa sababu ungependa kuongoza nchi ambayo ndio na tulivu. Niposa kuwe na ile matumizi ya agenda zake kama mwanyaji. On Thursday Kibra picks its next leader and what was meant to be a simple constituency contest will be closely monitored by the whole country. All right, you can tune in on Tuesday every news night Tuesday to see what the people are saying on different issues that was on the news night voices on Kibra. So let's see what you're saying online before we get into the views that are coming through. Let's put them up to 2422 is the SMS line. Abel from Eldred says a leader with integrity is first god fearing which is different from going to church secondly he or she should work mostly at the grassroots for all people regardless of tribe religion and status unfortunately in kenya such a leader is hard to come by all right let's see what else you're saying on 22422 sir nixon from kindaruma says we surely still vote along tribal and party lines that's why we end up picking semi illiterates instead of learned articulate and experienced administrators it's sad All right, let's see what else you're saying. Collins Onyango from Siaya says I have an idea, ideal in my heart and this is what I had decided to stand for sometimes back. This I'll not say on air, but what I'd say is that everybody in any position you are in, you can help Kenya. Every person is a solution to the current situation we are in. So, we need to open our eyes and see where we can help. All right. Leon says Kenyans love tribal politics and the big man syndrome. Civic education has been done enough times and people do not want to change. We are educated enough, we just have no interest in development whether real or perceived development. That women in Kibra does that that woman in Kibra does not care about tomorrow or the next five years. She doesn't care about the sewage near her house or the kid playing near it. If she did, she would have voted wisely a long time ago. All right, let's see what you're saying on Twitter now at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We'll sample some of your views also at the end of this broadcast. Let's see Engineer Lazaro. 
They're calling them Kiberians shouldn't drag themselves into a bitter supremacy wars fronted by some leaders who are only out to prove a point. Nasa and Jubilee Coalition died a long time ago, immediately after the handshake. All right. Governor 254 says tribalism is responsible for a lot of ills in Kenya, including underdevelopment, corruption, rigging of elections, and violence in civil war as well. In terms of employment, people are given jobs based on tribe, regardless of having low qualifications. Samo Indi says politics is an unforgiving arena that forgets the losers and rewards the winners. It's absurd that our politicians cannot grasp the, and the abstract truth that our economy is in shambles politicking ever. All right? Alitalala, you've seen, you've seen what the people are saying in Kibra, you've heard what the people are saying online. So, having watched the campaigns, the messaging, the realignments, the support, are we getting worse or are we improving? Always getting worse. And I want to thank my co-panelists for, for supporting, buying in my proposal that the tribe really, really has a, a position to play. Uh, my sister here was more philosophical. Uh, she didn't want to go the hard way like I did. But the truth of the matter, Trevor, is that uh, if only we were honest about tribe, we would be sitting here, for example, and saying the lawyers have too much of the plum jobs. Mm. Remember, Mzeoli Kaparo's commission mm. has looked at this thing called exclusion. And it has actually profiled which tribe has more jobs, which tribe is more advantaged in various thematic areas. And this all points to the tribe. But now let's come back to Kibra. I agree with my young brother, Mark, that politicians make us poor so that they can buy us cheap. And Trevor, when you are an impoverished man, you have no mind of your own. So even as we say that the people of Kibra should not accept this money, the truth of the matter is that these people are the, the most impoverished of us all. Yeah. And that 100 could mean having a meal at least that week. I say so because I'm born and raised in Kibra, in Makina specifically. And for the times that I grew up in Kibra, I know that the life in Kibra is, that, is a dog's life. But our politicians don't care. The second thing that you must know that will determine Kibra, even before we say yeah. that they should choose wisely, is the voter register. This thing has been flagged by ODM, yeah. and I have had, I've had a chance to look at this whole, as, a, as an advocate. Trevor, there is a legal definition of what a voter register must be. Yeah. And therefore, the requirement that the voters must verify their details is to ensure that what it is that is in the voter register corresponds to your particulars. Yeah. IBC has published a register that does not have ID people's identity. They have the first digit and the last digit. If you are looking for Mark Bichachi, maybe Mike Nyongesa, there could be 10 of them. If you are looking for the date of birth, people share dates of birth. The only unique identifier yeah. is the identity card. So IBC again is at it. Yeah. The verification is impossible. Unfortunately, ODM have gone to court late. Yeah. And again, the, the orders that they are seeking are really not so useful. Because even if the IBC provided the register now, there is no time for verification. But there is something cooking in Kibra as far as the voter registration is concerned. Yeah. Number two. You, number two. Yeah. Very briefly. Yes. What will make or break in Kibra are two things. The tribe and the money. There is a lot of money in circulation in Kibra now. That I can tell you for a fact because I've been there. There's a lot of money circulating. Between Kibra and Karen, the destination of choice, there is a lot of movement. So money will determine. And that explains why the candidates are not even visible. Mm. They are mumbling some words, two, three minutes, and then their big shots, the sponsors, speak. So the people of Kibra don't care whether it's candidate X or candidate Y. The people of Kibra know that these members of parliament yeah. Once they go to parliament, they, 
have no idea what else is happening there. So they'll take the money now. Number two, they'll vote for a person depending on the lines. The Akamba have been brought their governors, so they'll want to listen, and they spoke in mother tongue. In so much so that Honorable Raila Odinga was happy, and he even made a comment that they, when the Akamba ladies tell you it, seems, it is. The lawyers have been told, vote for ours. So two things will determine the vote in Kibra. Number one, three things, the voter register. Yeah. Number two, money. Number three, the tribe. The and finally, yeah. this habit of political inheritance of seats in this country is sickening. Someone must mm -hmm. get a post because he or she deserves it. We must give meritocracy a chance. Yeah. But unfortunately, for Kenya where you stand, those three will determine Kibra. Not yeah. so much the manifesto yeah. or the candidates. Wanjiru, there's a rather bleak picture being painted there. How do we change the politics of this country then? Because the electorate will eventually have the power. Well, I think from the outset, I, I said, Trevor, that we are at a point in our country where we have major structural problems yeah. that need to be need a, a national dialogue, which means this present administration has lost the legitimacy actually doesn't have the legitimacy, doesn't have the will to resolve these problems, and that's why they're cobbling together the BBI to try and mask some of them. Now, that's our reality. So these things, if unresolved, are going to come back to bite us, and we are talking about economic uh, implosion. We are talking about also the kind of the political tensions. Now, with regard to the voter register, the merits of uh, the court case and the concerns raised aside, it's, it's very uh, troubling because this narrative uh, reflects very closely what happened in 2017. Um, in fact, even in 2013, same questions being raised at the same juncture, at the same point in the electoral process. So there's a script that uh, ODM uh, has perfected yeah. around the voter register and the questions ra raised around an electoral process. If, by chance, IBC doesn't manage this process well, then this lays the ground for a challenge and the kind of conflict and uh, violence that could emanate from there. So that is extremely disturbing. Um, now, the one, one point I think I really wish to disagree with is I don't think voters choose poor leaders because, they are, because of poverty. Um, they, we choose poor leaders because our choices, we have terrible choices. Right now, the main political choices are uh, the Kieleweke, Tanga Tanga. That's on the candidates. national front. For Kibra, there are 24. There are 24. Out of them, the 24, must but serve in the reality, in reality, you always look, if I'm looking at the larger political parties, yeah. let's say, um, the option of candidates who are fronted and the ones who have the political muscle yeah. who are likely to get into office because political muscle is about the ability to run a campaign as long as voters are presented with weak political choices they will choose then to vote where they think they will win yeah. they will make a rational choice based on an imperfect system and therefore will get a poor result so what i want this to is say the lesser the point, evil of the mini Right, because um, it takes a lot of courage as a voter to go to the ballot box and vote for number three or number four, knowing you will not, uh, your vote will not uh, carry the day. So the reason we have bad voting decisions is in large part because we have a, a broken voting system yeah. and we have broken political parties and they're giving us terrible political choices because we failed to implement chapter six. Mm. We have ignored Justice Mumbi's uh, ruling. Yeah. We have failed to pass the political uh, campaign financing regulations. So because our electoral system is broken, we are going to continue getting these kind of illogical choices uh, confronting uh, voters. Yeah. That said, Philosophically, I, I'd like to think that the, um, the electorate in Kibera, in Kibra, having um, benefited from Ken o, uh, Okot's leadership, yeah. because he was an exemplary um, uh, yeah. representative, yeah. he used his CDF very well. CDF is, is illegal, shouldn't, is unconstitutional, should not be running, but much as it is, all those things, he used it very well, invested in education, empowerment. He has a very good track record. So in the silence of the next few days, yeah. because political you know, jamborees are over, 
voters may sit back and as they are jumping over the sewage and you know running their kids to school, uh, hospital and all those yeah. they may think let's go development so there's still a possibility at the end of the day they are going to decide who of these candidates is likely to continue the legacy because that's some that's a selfish interest for them yeah. um, there may also be a revenge uh, a disappointment with uh, the decisions that uh, Raila took yeah. and there may be a group that may decide we're going to punish uh, Raila. Yeah. I think even in embracing and allowing um, Jubilee and Ruto in mm -hmm. particular to hold those big rallies, yeah. that was a statement on this handshake doesn't represent us. People okay. died okay. Uh, uh, around, around those events. So I would say that we have a broken political process. Our voters have now developed a character that reflects the leadership. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we need to deal with political leadership okay. and stop uh, blaming the voter for broken political leadership. And that's, how, that's what I want us to talk about about how do we fix that system right after the break and we'd also like to hear from you as well how does that system change because the power is with the people when you go to the voters booth what is in your mind they say that the power is with the people is a metaphorical statement <laughs> but let's hear from you when we come back from the break 2242 is the sms line all right thank you for staying with daybreak we're keeping an eye on kibrates the eve of the by elections 24 candidates but people say only three of them are in the limelight and we're arguing here before we came from the break of whether the power really is with the people and my argument is that we've seen this in the gambas south where John Paul Murigi was voted in, despite having no resources at all. And let, let's talk about this uh, SAE. And how do we change the voting patterns of the political system in this country? Because uh, do you, first, do you believe the power is with the people? Yes, I say it in switch of KPLC all yeah. the time. I say power is with the people. And it is a very kind of broad, open-ended statement because mm -hmm. what does that power mean? Is it literal power? Is it a power within yourself? Is it, you know, so, so, so yes, the, it, it can be left just floating there. And it's almost like a motivation to say, look, you have it within you. You have what it takes. But I was reflecting on the 24 candidates you said uh, there. Many of them more or less are like independent candidates yeah. because when you have a political party that is not heavily moneyed it boils down to the one when you talk about political muscle we're actually talking about who has the money to run a campaign and maybe who has also the money to to pay people on the side the same money that we have been uh, debating about and i've been saying you know i would if i was living in kibra and i saw my my conditions were never going to change and somebody offered me money and i say this is the only time every five years that i'm given money for free instead of waking up at four in the morning to walk to industrial area to see whether my name is on that list so that i can make uh, 200 bob or 300 bob that day, I would take it. So what has happened is those political parties with the money, with the resources, have hijacked the entire arena so that if there were, say, 21, 22, 15, 10 other candidates potentially able to bring about transformation, utilizing the national resources available, in their power as legislators, even though you say the CDF or Nigeria is not uh, legal, but using whatever resources are, are, are currently available, those people will never have a fighting chance of being voted in. Because they can come, they can read you their manifesto, they can tell you what they, they can have been born and raised and bred and yes, live there, yes. but nobody will vote for them because they didn't also come with the 100 bob or the 500 bob. They came with the promise of what they will deliver. So who's to blame for this? Because then it becomes the statement where not, we get the leaders not, with it is, up. It is not the voter. And you know, I rigorously and vigorously resist, wait for it, <laughs> gaslighting and victim blaming of voters because for me and that mama who spoke with the nine children and you tell her it's your fault you you are where you are it's like telling somebody who was raped that it's your fault that you were raped Does that if, 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 no 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 the, the idea of turning around and saying it is your fault you have the leaders you deserve or you have been violated because of what you are wearing i know it's different but i'm trying to say every time we turn around and the victim in a situation is told actually you had the power to be in a slightly different place having the power is not an event it's a process the process of power of being powerful is a process of empowering and empowering nobody can empower you you empower yourself that awareness that knowledge that understanding that you have the ability to change your circumstances has to come from within but that ability that luxury to reflect on it cannot be when you're struggling to feed nine children when That's your life is so difficult that when you're between a rock and a hard place, mm. you choose the rock 
because anyway the hard place was right behind you and if that rock is 500 bob or 300 bob the only question is we also have such honorable uh, 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 voters and an electorate that when they are given the money, mm. they say, you know, anyway, I was given money, mm. so I must vote for yes. this person. Yes. They, have, they have not even become uh, uh, clever enough to understand, maybe I can take the money and vote for someone else. But that said, let me not say that I'm a proponent mm. of voter bribing or voter rigging that way. No, people should be able to vote for others based on the, 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 the platform they stand on. Yeah. But the reality is very, very different. So I will always stand on the side of the voter. Yeah. I will reject the victimization of the voter. Yes, there's a lot of education that needs to happen, but civic education has been happening forever. We always say civic education, civic education. People fall back to tribe or fall back to the little monies they received, yeah. but they're driven by something. If I was voting, I'd be driven by something. What is driving me? Yeah. A philosophical, existential change in the country or the need to feed my child tomorrow. Okay. And whatever drives me is yeah. what will cause me to vote. And I want to say something, even when we vote when was the last time our vote actually counted okay. we're waiting for servers to be opened we do not trust i do not trust the integrity of the system so ultimately for me even if i went to vote wisely tomorrow in kibra would it count would it count yeah. and when okay. it doesn't count yeah. then people play games okay. and when they play games those games involve high stakes monies and they are dancing on the heads of the most impoverished most vulnerable yeah. members of society okay. in kenya mark how do we change this you know i i have serious issues with um, not gaslighting kenyans mm. Because I think Kenyans are not lit enough, if it was to use the hip term. Mm. Because Kenyans need to be on fire. And I'll tell you why. Currently, as we speak, there's a country called Chile, which literally shut down because there was a 4% increase in transport charges. 4%. Now, 4%, let's assume it was 100 shillings. That is four shillings on top. Yet we live in a country where if a matatu sees three drops of rain on its windscreen, the fare will double and Kenyans will pay. Yeah, indeed, indeed. We also live in a country, and let me highlight this, that you do not need 90% of a country to be thinking. You need 10% because that's how societies are built. The problem with this country is did the middle class in this country not vote for Sonko and did they not vote for Kidero before him? Let's be honest. It is not just poor people that are making poor decisions. I've sat with professors who will sit down and remember, wait, my last name is Kamau, I know who I'm voting for. It's Onyango, I know who I'm voting for. The issue here is not poverty. The issue is that Kenyans vote without regard of consequence of their vote. And secondly, Kenyans have shock absorbers where they should not have any. I'm telling you the truth. In this country, you can increase the cost of anything overnight. And Kenyans will be okay. You understand? And that problem is not a poor person problem. It's a Kenyan problem. Because our colonial upbringing told us to accept and move on on everything. So do I blame the Kenyan voter? Yes, I do. Because if I do not blame them, who is going to vote for different next? If we don't tell them, listen, you have that capacity. Let me tell them, if you don't tell them, listen, tomorrow, you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to be told, by the way, if you vote for candidate X or candidate Y, you can come to office Z and you'll be given money. Now, if you're foolish enough to say that I am going to make a vote based on 500 shillings, trust me, it is not poverty because even Jesus can't save you. Because the truth of the matter is this, who will be there in the booth to make sure that the 500 shillings you got goes to the person who gave you 500 bob? Come on. We cannot have wisdom in how we choose our Chama chairman. Because if you go to Kibra, is the treasurer of the Chama for five women, is that woman a thief? The treasurer for a Chama of five men, is that treasurer a thief? No. How do we have common sense in our houses? 
how do we have common sense in how we do things, then suddenly this same voter, when it comes to voting for an MP, IQ and intelligence escapes them. Let's not also say that poverty has made people unable to make decisions. Some of the finest people I have met have grown up in places of extreme difficulty. And one of the abilities to survive in Kibra, by the way, is you need to be very smart. Because if you're not smart, you don't make it. If you're dumb in Karen, you are most likely to make it. If you're dumb in Kribla, you'll die. So let's not lie to those people. They're intelligent. They are smart. They're most, some of the most resilient Kenyans. Trevor, you tell me, mathematically speaking, if you earn less than 10,000 shillings a month, do you even know how to breathe? No, you don't. Yet that person is able to take his kid to school, manage the, the, to eat, and manage to make that 10,000 bob work. Then suddenly they're not clever enough to elect an MP. Then how is it that they were able to elect Ken Okoth? Were they, was it a fluke? They were thinking. No. Okay. No. They were thinking. Okay. And uh, Dr. Lalan is like this, but speaking of the people of Kibra, yeah. they spoke to us, so we want to hear what they said and listen to them firsthand because they are the people who will be voting tomorrow. Listen. In less than 24 hours, residents of Kibra will go to the ballot and they will elect a new member of parliament. So this morning, we thought of talking to them and asking them what are some of the things that, and the hopes they have with their new member of parliament? What do they want to be tackled? What are some of the issues they're facing that they hope the next person who goes to parliament will represent them and will help them tackle? Let's speak to them and find out. Kuna vitu mingi hapa, hapa kibira sana, tunasumbuka sana. Sunaona kama mimi hapa, sunaona nauzia kwa barabara. Sifai kuwa ninakaa hapa. Atutengeneze mali pazuri, sisi wa mama mali tunaeza uzia. Juhata hapa tunauza tu lakini atufai kuuzia hapa. Sai tunaona shida ni pesa, watu wa wanunui mboga. At least tuimbulufu kitu kingine jenye tutaongezea kwa stock. Kitu kingine, akienda huko, tukona watoto wanaenda shule. Wengine wanatuambia pasari sa hii. Kitambo tulikuwa tunapewa pasari ya 5,000. Wanasema kuna matarichio tena ya kuongesa 10,000. And that's our expectation. Wakiongesa, tuwana watoto wetu watasoma. Hapa kipitu naona hati parabariti mayaripika. Tundaka watuwana kama datusaitia. Maachi. Maachi nasumbua. Eh, Yirutu mingi. Maachi na kujangu wa hiki hatu marambiri na potea. Shukuli, shukuli ya joo. Shukuli ya joo mingi ya angalia ya majoo hapa kibira. Na unajua tuna majoo sa NOS ilichenga batu watu wanalipishwa pesa mingi. Ajaribu kuangalia kama sinasabunguswa padara ya 10 bobu wa weke 5 bobu. Watu wana ideas nyingi sana ambayo wana feel kuingia kwa biashara challenge ni moja jinsi ya kupata funds funds miradi zerekari imetoa mingi sana ya kupata hizo funds but shida ya masharti ambazo kwa access hizo funds ni, rea, ni ngumu ambayo si wengi wanaweza meet hizo needs ambazo wanahitaji so kama kuna njia ambayo wanaweza set uh, in such a way that to access those funds, it's uh, very easy to access. So people can do business easily. Hira changamoto tunapiti hapa, tunakuta tukipukusu hapa, tu, yani amani ya tuko nayo kwa hapa. So you've heard it from the residents of Kibras. Those are some of the things they want their next member of parliament to address as they head to represent them in the National Assembly. Back to you, Trevor. Thanks, Kimani. That's Kimani Bugwa speaking to the people of Kibra. And Ultralala, you've had their concerns. They know what the issues are, but I'll give you 30 seconds for your closing remarks as they head to the ballot. What should they think about? Uh, thank you. Uh, despite all the, the constellation of problems that we have said uh, bedevil the system in this country, uh, I would like to tell this to the people of Kibra. You've been through it all. But this time, make up your mind and vote for a person not on the basis of the money that you've been given, not on the basis of your tribe, but on the basis of the meritocracy principle. That that person, in your own judgment, is a person who will deliver development in Kibra. Okay. A person who will be answerable to you. All right. Chagwe ni mtu ambaye 
atawafaa si ambaye amewapa pesa si ambaye mumaambiwa mpigie na mababe wa kisiasa okay Panjiru. Democracy is taught. Um, it's an abstract uh, uh, theory, but it's taught. And Ken Okoth lived democracy. He was a community mobilizer. He got into power through community organizing. He also ran his CDF with a very bottom-up uh, basis. So the electorate of Kibra are well schooled in democracy, in democracy and good governance. Yeah. So they may surprise us. I think they may go beyond the uh, ethnic question, beyond the jamboree of being ruled by big political parties. I think after the vote is done, we will need actually to have some proper study to understand the complexity of the Kibra voter because I don't agree they're that simplistic. Mm -hmm. They are learning every day and they've been through a lot of experiences, good, bad, yeah. and um, their decision ultimately, I believe, will be driven by their interest, which is likely to be a development interest, not a political, big political party interest. All right. Jerry, 30 seconds. Okay, that Kibra is still grappling with issues of sanitation. Of, 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 of the extreme base, the extreme poverty that basic needs uh, development oriented programming that ostensibly have been running in Kenya for so many years should have, uh, should have taken care of shows me that there is a failure and Kibra is, 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 is a microcosm of what Kenya is today okay. so even as we talk to the electorate in Kibra we are talking to the electorate across the country to say how do you want your country to be run okay. if leadership at the top has failed yeah. um, we also see it replicated down to the constituency level um, uh, elections yeah. and what I'd like to say to that mama and I'm always for the mama who is there trying to struggle to survive to raise and to feed her children is and I agree with Talala here if you have taken that money because you knew it was a difference between your child eating today and not still go to the polls yeah. and vote wisely okay. to the extent of your ability but I will not turn around and blame you and say you have the leader you deserve because I know that that the odds have always been against you okay. and it is incumbent upon the wider space to make sure that the odds are not against the most poor and the most vulnerable. All right. Mark, 30 seconds. It is never the largeness of the promise, it is the heart and the character of the person who promises. Words are a dime a dozen, but you must look at the content and the history and the character of the person who is promising and ask yourself, do they have a track record of keeping promises? A tiger does not change its stripes and going to their guest house is not going to change the person that you're voting for. And the people who've been there before, the grand leadership of the country, you need to look at them squarely in the eye and ask yourself, are the promises they're giving you worth the words they're saying? Yeah. And if your conclusion is not, then vote selfishly. Vote for yourself. Okay. Vote for someone who'll make CDF work for you. Vote for someone who'll make sure your classrooms are built make vote for someone who will make sure if not for you yeah. at least for your children there is a better future all right mark bichachi communication strategist thank you so much heritage say human rights activist but she likes to be called active citizen <laughs> we have wanjiru bikoja national coordinator at the institute for social accountability tisa and alutalala mukwana advocate thank you for making time this morning there's a lot of feedback coming through i'll try to squeeze in as many of them as i can sms 2242 because i promised i would read them so that mark doesn't hold me accountable here sir rolling says let's be fair to the candidates raila odinga is the longest serving mp for kibra no one knew of ken okot and what he was capable of until and only when he was elected that we got to know all right let's see what else you're saying Benar says a sitting DP promising the people of Kibra if you elect my person I will create jobs a former prime minister promising if you vote for my person I will build you houses Kenyans my brothers and sisters may the gold lord open our eyes All right let's see what else you're saying I'm Muminde says Kibra residents twice voted for Ken Okoth arguably the best MP when he served what makes us think that they can't do that again why are we thinking tribe and poverty will always have influence when history had shown us otherwise all right good question there Tom Kibaraza says power is not with the people in Kenya our politicians not leaders are the ones crippling our great nation we shouldn't rely on them for progress money matters a lot in campaigns all right, Sir Rollings again says uh, that has already been read. Let's see the next one. Omwando Vickery says the analogy that power is with the people is illusionary and a beatable fallacy because a poor man has no mind of his own. 
the philosophy is to keep the masses poor and ruling them giving them handouts to stop thinking this is kenya for you okay caleb kimaiga says unless we as kenyans surprise politicians by not turning up to vote during voting even if we bring new faces they will be spoiled by a rotten system Let's see what you're saying on 22422. That's our SMS line. Can you include your name and where you're texting from? As we sample some of them here. Sami Ndungu says, It is surprising to note that Kibra is someone's bedroom. So we have been living in someone's bedroom, not even his sitting room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ezekiel Musoko says, an integrity, an integrity leader is a leader who does, does something good to his people, even when it is difficult. Okay, let's see. Maritim says a good leader is from God. Kama yeye mwenyewe ameamua sisi hatuna say. But wa ndugu wa Kibra waamue change kusonga mbele au kubaki pale. Langu ni kuwatakia mema na upendo. Wote wapige kura kwa amani. All right, that does it for the conversation this morning. The Island Kibra tomorrow will cover that by election for you.